Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Just wanted to show you uh, how to assemble one of our new uh, LM2596 DC to DC step down power supplies. Uh, first I'll give you a demonstration. Uh, there is a bridge rectifier and because of that uh, you can have AC in or DC in. The, uh, well, since this bridge rectifier is populated, you can put your uh, DC positive and ground in any order on the input uh, on the input pins. It doesn't matter which one's your which one's ground, which one's uh, your DC input. Uh, and same thing for AC input. Doesn't matter which one's your hot, which one is your neutral. But uh, I, you can't plug this into a 120 volt mains. So keep that in mind. Uh, don't put more than 30 volts AC on the input. 36 volts DC on the input is uh, is fine. Um, so yes, you can you can either populate the rectifier or depopulate it. If you feed DC at the input and you populate the rectifier, you lose a couple of volts. But if you don't mind about that, then it's fine. Otherwise, you can not populate it, and I'll show you where you can put your positive and negative uh, power. Uh, you can put, as I said, up to 36 volts DC on the input, and you can vary the output using this uh, potentiometer. It can sustain one to two amps uh, continuous, uh, but and th uh, three amp surge current. But you can't sustain th three amps; just a surge current of of uh, about a second. You can uh, sustain that, so that's just maximum. But uh, continuous should be up to two amps. However, your heat sink will get very hot. So it's a little bit better than the LM317. So right now, I'm going to show you how to put it together. Here's what comes with the kit: now you get a custom PCB. Uh, heat sink for the LM2596, bridge rectifier, uh, screw to attach the heat sink to the LM2596, uh, potentiometer with uh, mounting materials if you want them, uh, a knob for the potentiometer, LM2596 5 pin uh, step down regulator, uh, you know, uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, 330 ohm resistor, um, a large power diode, a coil, uh, two terminal blocks for the input and output voltage, and two 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. So first of all, let's populate our resistor and our capacitors. Now the uh, footprints on this specific circuit board isn't great, so you have to pay close attention here. The resistor goes in the R1 slot, which is right here. It's labeled R1. The ceramic 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitor goes in the C3 slot right here and uh, the two electrolytic capacitors go in the C1 and the C2 slot here and now one thing to note is the uh, long lead there's a long lead on the electrolytic capacitor and there is a short lead long lead is positive uh, on the two uh, electrolytic capacitor C1 and C2 footprints, there is a tiny plus sign on the bottom. So make sure that your long lead goes in the bottom holes and that your short lead, your negative, goes in the upper holes that are actually circled. Don't turn those around or else you'll, they'll blow up when you power it up. Be very careful. Solder those into place and uh, next we'll do the diode and the coil and the uh, potentiometer. The diode has a white side and a black side. The white side has a white stripe all the way around, and that's the negative side. The positive is, a bl is black. So on the, the uh, footprint here for D1, from this perspective, there is a uh, white block here, and the rest is, is, is clear. So make sure that you line up the, uh, the white side of the diode to this white block right beside the D1 uh, notation. The coil is placed right here and it doesn't matter which polarity it's just an inductor um, and the uh, potentiometer what you might notice is I've put the the screw on that's because I'm not going to be mounting it I'm going to be putting the but I don't want to get rid of it I want to save it so I'm going to be putting the knob on afterwards but I place that right in here there's three holes here it fits right in place solder them into place and then we will do our uh, our uh, LM2596 and the heatsink just wanted to add when you're putting the uh, knob on, you want to have so you only get about 300 degrees of rotation. So you want to have the arrow pointing at about six, seven o'clock, and just slide it on. It slides right on. The LM2596 uh, actually goes into the slot 
right here, U1. And there's five holes. As you can see, there's five pins. Make sure that the backing ground, the little white area in the back, is facing on the back. You want to make sure that the black is facing forward. You got to bend the pins out a little, but make sure that they're all in place. Do not solder them because we're going to put the heat sink, sink on uh, after. Uh, but we have to make sure that we're not soldering this in because we have to fit it right. So first of all, get all of them in place, but don't solder them. Now that I've got it in place but not soldered, I can take my heat sink, and as you can see, there's a hole there. That's where the screw is going to mount to it. There's two tiny holes to the uh, just to the left of the potentiometer and just to the left of the left side of the uh, LM2596. Fit it in, and then what you want to do is you want to take your screw and you want to line up the hole in the LM2596 with the hole on the heat sink. Screw it into place very tightly, then solder the heat sink and the LM2596 into place on the board. The rectifier, as you'll, know, you'll see from the front, has a negative symbol and a plus symbol. You want to make sure that you line those symbols up with the symbols on the board. Now if you actually look here, there's a negative symbol on the top here, and there's a plus symbol on the bottom here, and the two leads in the middle have a little AC symbol. So make sure that the side with the writing on it faces outwards, like this. Uh, put it soldered down into the board. Now, if you don't want to use AC and you want to, uh, what you can do is you can solder wires. Uh, you can solder a black wire here and a red wire here to the to the plus symbol, and leave the two. Uh, the two holes in the middle empty and you can apply DC there so negative at the top positive at the bottom and that will uh, that will basically ensure that you don't have as much loss because you will have about two two volts loss if you uh, apply DC to the inputs with the rectifier in so it's really up to you I would populate the rectifier and sacrifice the two volts but it really depends on what you're trying to build so solder that into place uh, lastly we do have the uh, terminal blocks. There's three holes here for the term first terminal block. Uh, make sure that you place your terminal block in the uh, in the area with the two uh, swirly symbols. Those are the two AC symbols. They look like little, little waves. Uh, leave the hole at the top unpopulated and make sure that the screw terminals are facing outwards. So place it right in there. Solder it flush to the board. And your second one make sure that the screw terminals are facing out at the output right there solder those into place uh, and we'll be done we'll test it I've placed uh, my DC at the input doesn't matter which one's positive which one's negative because of the rectifier I did tell you how to um, wire directly for DC so that's your prerogative um, as for the output your DC output your uh, positive lead is on the bottom and your uh, ground is closest to the potentiometer on the top. I've indicated that using uh, red and black wires, red for positive, black for negative. I've powered it on, I've got about 23, 24 volts at the input. You don't have to use that high. Um, and it works. That's all you need to do to test it. And now you can power up whatever you want with it. Um, I will also sell these, I believe, fully assembled, but for a few dollars more because it does take time for me to solder up and test these. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I'll put up more specs on the uh, eBay listing at electroniclessons.com and at engineeringshock.com. Check out our sites. Thanks for watching, everyone.